Hi everyone, Mesa Coda back again with another live dev interview, this time with 3D Forge, otherwise known as the Blacksmith himself. This is the Royal Quarters pack from 3D Forge and it's an extension to his Village Exteriors kit that you can get over on the Unity Asset Store and this interview was taken from my live Twitch stream or the www.twitch.tv slash the Messy Coder where you can catch me. If you find this Saturday talking with fantastic people like 3D Forge. So sit back, enjoy and I'll see you all in a moment. Everyone at home, on their PCs, mobile phones, tablets, around the world, give a warm, messy welcome to the blacksmith himself, Mr. 3D Forge. Hey, buddy. Welcome back to the stream. Yes, thanks for inviting me with us. I wanted to, um, to grab you on. As soon as I saw your tweet, that it's live, that it's alive, I grabbed you. When you got to come on. We've got to play with your thing. We've got to see what this is. And what was the first thing I said to you? What was the, my first question I asked you? I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> it, it was, the question I got asked on Discord as well, was like, is this the PBR pack or is this not the PBR pack? Because uh, everyone was like... Fu so future, are you go? This is not the PBR pack to people asking because people have been seeing the screenshots of your update, of the new one, and they think it is the PBR pack because your screenshots look so lush. So that's got to be a compliment in itself that people uh, are immediately actually assuming that this is your PBR, new PBR pack, because your screenshots are looking so tasty. Yes, it's an add-on for this package. It's a model, a model add-on. There's 311 meshes, 311 prefabs, and texture add-on for the existing pack. Now, the existing package Plus, being working together with the interiors kit, none of them are PBR. So to, to have made it PBR, they're going to expect everything else also to then come as PBR. My future, when it's completely new packages, not this or combined or whatever with the existing historical packs, all future work would be PBR, but not this. Um, I had to release in line with the quality and texture technology and shaders and all those things that's with the existing package because lots of people have projects going with it you can't go and make part of the package be beyond part of it not exactly um can i just bring you back two steps yes you just t you just said 311 new meshes and 311 new prefabs with this package yes this update the royal quarters package have you have you made a mistake with your full stop in the right in the right place you, you're saying there's 311 in a what is the full price twenty dollars the full price is twenty dollars as a thank you to users because it's already a package um you can use those items all the new roofs and stuff possibly if you want to as standalone but it's really meant for the existing package and it's kind of a thank you for the users that came along the way with the development and already support my packages so I gave it at a 25% uh, discount as a launch for seven days. But yeah, the full package is $20 once it's out, ninety ninety nine. But, mate, you could have... You could have done this, 20 bucks, just with textures, no models. You could have just... I was just... going to be only a texture back, but like I said to you previously, it's a, it's a weakness of mine. I do more and give more than I initially intend and it grows and people say this and they comment that and they like this picture and like that picture then yeah it's a weakness <laughs> stop being nice <laughs> you got uh, you got bills to pay yes that's true that's why the price is where it is it's, uh, i had some nice feedback from users at the time that i discussed the price it's always a, a important part to both be able to to give value to users to not overprice it but also it doesn't help I sell it for too little with I, me getting 70% unity there, 30. I can't get peanuts at the end of the day, then it's not worth doing it. Yeah. I mean, but I think I think $20 is a nice price price uh, entry. Uh, dude, um, honestly, it's, hang on, let me, let me load it up on the screen so people can see it on the, um, on the asset store. Hang on, let me 
putting it into dollars because at the moment nobody wants to see the asset store in euros. That's just weird. Um, here we go. This is the asset store page. If you think of it, you get six new wall textures, tiles left to right, 311 new meshes, 311 new prefabs, easy materials, drag and drop textures, 20 premium blueprints, new Roman oriental roof tiles, three new sets of roof elements, large selection of oriental eastern style decorative elements, and what's this alt 2 bonus texture sheet and material? What's that? The initial, well, the, the main texture sheet that you see all the screenshots with is the material and textures are called Alt-1 so as an alternative one. And then there's a second texture sheet. If you do, when you, at the time as you go into the package, you can have a look. Some of the initial screenshots I did, the, the colors were quite a bit more, um, uh, can I say, more new, where the final colors ended up being the green, like a, a still an older green. If you look at that ochre color on that house, it's a it's a nice deep orange so i put, placed an extra texture sheet in with uh, similar colors but just brighter and even i can say even newer same normal map same uh, although it's got its own normal map sheet because the four wall textures i gave the different colors and then i added a fifth texture which is like a bamboo because you have many of those oriental eastern kind of things so i wanted to add something that fits a little bit with that and then there's one empty slot on the texture sheet that through user feedback and ideas that I might get, I will definitely add that sixth texture texture on that texture sheet. So there's one empty slot for extra, well, let's call it a free update later after getting some customer feedback. And um, we, got, we got a pop inside Unity to play with. I've just made a, a shortcut key, exclamation mark 3D while. Uh, let's have a look at chat before we uh, delve into playing with your with your new expansion. Um, we've, we've got some people popping in. Everyone just pop, as soon as, as soon as you come into a stream, everyone just starts popping into it. So we've got Fade Dynamic. Hello, how are you? Man, I'm still not feeling great. Fade Dynamic got a bit cough, feeling a bit sick, but I'm happy now because Three D Forge are with us. So fantastic. Um, yes, Deep Game Link says, buddy, you give too much. You do give too much. Um, People who can do assets amaze me. And then Code Mike says, kind of depends on who does those assets. Very good point there. Um, what else have we got here? We've got, um, well, we've got some questions in the Discord. I had some questions come in. Let me share my screen with you while we're talking about Discords. I hope your bandwidth is not going to explode. Me? Yeah. yeah. So. 100, 100 big up, 100 big down, far but uncapped. As long as you don't get the outage, we'll be fine. I know you've got some people. If people need to know the bad luck that you've got. That you make these amazing assets and the stuff that you have to put through to do it. Um, Going to be twenty dollars. Moment is fourteen ninety nine. Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Fourteen ninety nine at the moment. Remember, you get five bucks off. Another another five days. Another five days for your five bucks off. Well, se you know, seven days in total. So um. We should actually start counting down and take away a buck a day, but no, you've got them. <laughs> Where's the um? Where do, I've cleaned up. I've cleaned up my. Here we go. I have to have questions. Here we go. Uh, we got a question from Warpspot. Your interiors and exteriors packs have been around a long time. Any plans for some new PBR hotness or what we should, we've just discussed? Yes, you do have plans for PBR hotness. Um, and not, I don't want to put you on the, dates. The packages. No, no, because of the age of the two packages, they are not like brand new, the, the initial base releases. So I don't want to go and just keep on revisiting the old historical stuff. I'm still going to do lots of medieval. Uh, I've, I've got on paper written out more than 85 projects. So there's no shortage of ideas. 85? No, yeah, I don't think I can finish them in my lifetime. <laughs> I'll have to teach my, my, my two sons how to do it and they can carry on one day. <laughs> so there's no shortage of ideas. So I, I don't want to go back and keep on revisiting the older stuff. Um, I'd rather spend, when I do the PBR, to do complete new fresh. It um, definitely will, will still be lots of medieval fantasy stuff. I've had lots of users ask because of my strong, decent modular systems that I've got that work so well to also do some sci-fi, post-apocalyptic Oh, that's definitely nice. things that are, that are definitely going to do with um with nice modular stuff as well. That's same reusability as the existing packs. 
Uh, in chat, um, we just had Fade Dynamics asking, how long did it take you to make these assets? So, uh, well, it's a difficult question because I made the base and then kept on giving free releases. So I don't know what the the, the, the initial package, like the base base package, just took like four or five months. How big was the, then, was the original one? How much did you have in that original packet? What the interiors or the exteriors? The uh, it's Sh the should exteriors. be. Well, it, I don't know offhand, but it should be on the. Should be on a package. It should say what it was released with. I'm clicking on it myself now. Quickly go and have a look. On the first release, see what it says. If it says it there, with the, with the included um, text file, should say how much. No, I don't. The text file they included readme should have the oh, data okay. like that. Uh, but it had a couple of thousand. It's like two and a half thousand or something. It was something oh, wait, in the positively, silly, positively silly. I think in the readme it should be. I kept, yeah, that. No, no, not the products. The normal text file. The user file. Which one? Yeah, uh, that one. This should one. I, that one. Yeah, no, the, the user guide. Two down. That one. Unity's frozen. Come on, you bugger. What are we having? Nice to just open it in a word text editor or something, but it's fine. But it should, should the initial release should be, if you scroll to the right place, it should show what the, uh, the notes should have said that. No, I can't see any notes, dude. But it was a couple of thousand, and each time just added more and more. Yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby, a couple of thousand. And the, and the 1.1 add-on had uh, 36 fences, 12 walls, 30 tri what, thirty tries, 44 Plus extensions, nine log walls, 50 wooden roofs, 70 thatch roofs, 109 Dormer windows, 86 frames, four core parts. Those are just the things you added in the 1.1 update. And then... Uh, some, of the, some of the updates were kind of the size of packages themselves. Yeah, man. The next one was, was 317 meshes you added. The next one was 248 meshes you added. The next one was over 1,000 meshes you added. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Lemon squeeze. Like many packages in one, actually. Oh my word! Um, do you plan to release more Tyler Dungeon assets? Oh, definitely, definitely. Because those were they they work really well. I've had lots of good feedback. I just yesterday actually had another five star review on that. Nice. Um, the package does keeps on selling, and people are happy with it. For That's me, the big thing there was, and the idea for the Tyler Dungeon is, is that I've seen many of the other packages to build a. Uh, 10, uh, like 10 by 10 meter area or whatever. You need to put so many little tiles down to make it. So I wanted to really have a thing we can drag and drop three or four or five or 10 of this tiles and you have a giant dungeon area. So that's where that idea came from. We need to play about with that one another time. We need to play yes. about with that one another time, mate. Uh, just a reminder, gentle reminder to everyone at home. Please, if you have purchased an asset and you have played with it and you do like it, don't forget to pop onto the asset store and give a review because it does actually help because Makes believe it or difference. not exactly one um, of the biggest ways to say thank you to a publisher is to to write an honest review uh, at the end of the day i want any any user i don't want one person to buy my packages that that end up being unhappy i want them to see good reviews that good as in informative to make them buy and do an, an informed choice when they buy and if the package is not what the, the person really needs, then they must rather not buy it. Um, I want them to buy and be happy. And I want to keep on inputting and being part of each person's success on my side. They're helping me to make a success. I would like them to make a success as well. Now, you do have, you know? um, just looking at back onto the store, you do have the smaller packs as well and some freebies to show people uh, what they can expect. 
the smaller packs are extracts. Lots of people ask, yeah, but if I only want the tavern stuff, if I only want the this, you know, or only want the that. That's why I extracted that, and I tried to make the, the text clear that it's only a portion, uh, well, a third more or less of the bigger package. And um, I, I'm amazed. Sometimes when the, the like I say, the exterior kit was on sale at 50%, so, oh no, let's call it the interior kit. Yeah. means you could, you could get it for $30, and these other smaller packages sell for $25. I still had people buying the $25 third of the package at during the same time that the full package sold for $30. Uh, and, uh, you do get people that don't, I think, properly investigate and read. But, um, yeah, there's, there's nothing I can do about that if somebody does that. I've, I've luckily never had somebody that come and said, I've missed it. Please, can I have the full thing? Uh, I hope it doesn't happen because <laughs> it's a bit, a bit of a difficult thing just to, you can't swap it out. Over here on the left-hand side, um, we can see that there's a documents folder. And inside the documents folder is where I found this, how to use World Quarter textures and this World Quarter's user guide. And in that user guide, it actually tells you where you can find it. The package prefabs can be found at Assets, Speedy Forge, Fantasy Exteriors, Village and Towns, Prefabs, Base, Roofs, and then Royal. My word, that's a long folder structure. And the blueprints can be found in Assets, Speedy Forge, Blueprints, Premium Blueprints, PB Vec, World Quarters, Blueprints. I can oh. just say thank you about the blueprints. The with the packages with the last couple of releases, I think with the interiors even and the exteriors and any new packages, I pre-do and dump the blueprints directories in a very simple, basic way. The idea is, is for the upcoming blueprints, so that people can easily find them. The the normal blueprints that's on the website available, the the free ones, are just blueprints. The ones that's going to be paid for packages are premium blueprints. So that sounds organized, so it's quite easy actually to find the blueprints like you see there in your directory. So how do I use, I'm just going to drag this in, how do I use it? Just... No, no, just hang on. Very, very, you can drag a blueprint in now, but I want to, okay, let's, you can have a look at these ones first, but then I want to show you how easy it is to actually do it. Oh, show me. So, right, so, yeah. hang on, let's can delete that one. Yes, yeah, delete that one. I know the whole house. He's gone. House is dead. Yes. Now you go to the material folder. Bottom left, the material folder. This one here? Yeah. Um, it'll be nice if you can show the icons so you can drag the things so it doesn't show names. You can there use you the names there. It's just nice if you see little balls. Cool. There you see the two Sorry. bottom ones. You can, now you can carefully see the left one is Alt 1 and the right one is Alt 2. You can see the alt two is like brighter, green, red, yellow, and and and, and blue. Are these ones here? Plus plus yes. Well, I think it's a little bit of fact. That's a, that's the alt two. There's alt one. Now just drag that, take that alt one, and drag and drop it onto any part of the house. Hang on, any part of what? One of these houses? Take, take no no. Well, your mouse is a little bit slow. Yes, one of these houses in the scene. Oh, right, just drag take that. Take that. On. Drag, uh, drag the little ball. Click and drag and drop it onto the wall. And we've got, did I hear something about a sci-fi kit? Yes, he's doing a sci-fi kit. It's one of his 84 different projects that he's got lined up. Click the house. You shouldn't click it. You should just drag and drop the ball yeah, and onto it. So that's the one that I've already got. So I'm going to drag this one on here. Hang on, I've got, I've got the hole. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Easy as that. Drag and drop the material. No, no, they're on the house itself. Just now when you did it, it went blue. That's it, it'll drop it. It's dropped. Yeah. Now that wall has changed. Drag and drop it onto the other walls. You can see the wood on that window is already the new, fresher wood. You can drag and drop onto the wooden frame as well. So which one's this one? What's this one here? This is the old... This is the old no, blue one. So I can go blue... Uh, I can go blue, this one, and then that one there. I've got a multicolored house. Well, they will both be blue. <laughs> because that occupies the same space on the UV map. That original beige, dirty beige wall, that space is occupied by the blue on the texture map. If 
you understand what I'm saying? Could you possibly open up the user guide? You go to the documents folder. Yeah, I'm just looking at your board. Hang on one second. Um, you, how do you Drag it onto the wooden frame as well. Take that new material, old one. Oh yeah, just open that one maybe first. I see the wood is nice newer wood, not the old. Let's have a look. No, no, the whole wooden frame is done right around already. So there's your old the wood. Wooden That's your old wood, and there's your new wood. Yes. So yeah, your new wood's a lot better. I do like. I can wood. drop that onto the onto the bottom floor, then you'll see it as well. There you go. Look at that. Drop it out as easy as that. Because it's a Royal Quarters upper market, nicer thing, then it's that's why it's newer and fresher wood. Yeah, so you just drag and drop the. the well, that's the wrong one. That's the bamboo texture. <laughs> yeah, I like that though. That's nice. I like those bricks. That's nice bricks you got, man. And that's not. This isn't a PBR. None of this is PBR. No, it's not PBR, but it's got decent normal maps and everything. So you keep in line with what the package already is. That's nice. We got um, code name Mike. Code name Mike. God, God, just butchering your butchering your name. Um, I really like how 3D Forge developer focused on a nature uh, on nature a lot in his assets. Do you have plans of adding a new type of nature, for example, mountain village or swamp houses? Oh, definitely. That's the idea of the blueprints. The blueprints that's going to come out, the page for packages, will be specifically thematic packs. There will be a package that's, for instance, fortresses and outposts. There's a package that will be swamp villages. There's one that will be farmlands. that will be thematic packages, so if you want more of this or more of that. And then I'll do combo packs as well, where you'll get like two, three farms, one outpost, like a combo adventure oh, pack. Nice. So you don't have to, if you don't need lots of one thing or many of it, then you can buy the combo where you can get a nice little collection a few of, of each, and then you can build your whole little game with that. But if you want more of this or more of that, then you can go and buy the, the specific thematic pack. Oh, I like that. I like... I like this. My house but is high. Is 20, 20, 20 already pre-done, but then the others is as easy as drag and dropping onto... On the existing house. the... Now, can I just show you something there? Look at your prefabs at the bottom. You see the icons? Uh, the little houses? Yeah. The little thumbnails. Yep, you see some of the roofs. Things. Some of the roofs is gone. Oh, yeah. That's that's a Unity bug. I want to just show you. So it's, it's nice that people are here and you can actually see that. Cool. It's good. very easy. Go on the blueprints, the word blueprints. Yep. Right click and do it. Bottom left. Right click on it and just say re import. I think it's a metadata thing combining the two packages. Just right click on the icon uh, yep. re import on blueprints. Oh, and then poof, poof, like magic, here they come again. Yeah, there they're all done. It just needs to pull the roof in. I think it's a metadata thing where, for some reason, between versions, it just doesn't read. And when you do it, it kind of refreshes it. So that's, you have to do that only once, then it's done. Hang on. But the split map or something changed, not there. Yeah, just like a. Right, you drag the terrain. Well, there's those two terrains. You made a duplicate. I'm just making a little bit more space. Ah, that's it. <laughs> or you just delete one or two of the other houses. That's the nice thing. You're you're going to get such a variety now that you can use vertus snapping. Hold V and snap it to the corner. Oh, I'm too lazy for that, dude. No, just hold P on the keyboard. No. You can select the one terrain and snap it to the corner of the other one. Select the right hand side, hold V. No, you don't have to do it accurate like that, then V will snap it exactly on. I'm doing it, I'm holding down, there you go. No, no, on the hold V and go, and go to the actual terrain with your mouse. My, po my point of my bloody terrain is in there. Is in a strange place. Oh, no, 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 no. You're making it difficult. It's easy. 
Old V. No, no, man. Move it away. Move it away from the other terrain. No, this is one of the biggest things that most people don't even know about. Okay, show me. Move the terrain away. Yeah. Old V. Yeah. Old V. The V key and the move, and then I go with your mouse pointer to the to the, the corner of the terrain itself. Yeah. Leave the gizmo. Leave the gizmo alone. Yeah. No, no, the corner. Yeah. That's the right hand side terrain that you're trying to oh, drag okay, that closer. One, yeah. That the one, one on the right. Yeah, that one. There, there, there. Hold the V. Yeah. Now click and click and drag the terrain after holding V. Am I still holding, holding V or v. Shall, shall I let go of V? No, hold it. Yeah. Now click and hold and drag and drag the terrain to the left now. I didn't notice any difference. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> now you're going to kick yourself one day when you discover this. Discover it now. Move the terrain away a little bit. Don't I need to have the snapping thing on? No, move the terrain away a little bit. Yeah. Now, the bottom left corner of that terrain that you're trying to move. Hold yeah. your mouse there. This no, one not here. the gizmo. This thing here. No. There, 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 there. Yes, yeah. the corner of the terrain itself. Yeah. Old V. Old V. Hold V and drag and drag the terrain to the left. It's not doing nothing, man. Ah, oh, man. Is the terrain selected? Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> uh, <there's, laughs> use the move tool. No, I promise you. Again, you can't use it on terrain. But I'm pretty sure I need to have no, the stuff thing on. anything. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, we're like, "Now nah, you're all right. Let's move this out over here." <laughs> all right. Ah, it works from the pivot points. Hang on. Probably got my thing set to local. Um, let's find a house. All right. And I can I paste the link in the. Um, in, your, in, in the send me a, send me a Discord in, and I'll put it in. Oh, hang on, how do we how do I grant you access? Can one of the mods who knows what they're doing <laughs> grant 3D Forge access to pay, to post links? Because mm -hmm. I don't know how you do that. Um, what's the next question we've got? Do you think that the bundle? Oh, that's a good question. Do you think that that bundle with uh, with Gaia? Helped your sales more, or procedural worlds, or has it been mutually beneficial? What the bundle with Gaia? Yeah, not bundled with Gaia. When you in that? Know about it. When you in that um, thing, magic from the Unity? I can't recall that I was in a bundle with Gaia. I have done promotions in cross cross promotions when other packages like Gaia is obviously beneficial because oh you're talking about me being included in Gaia the free the free bunch of of, uh, of assets that come as sample assets talking about that ah uh, probably that but I thought you were in the upper pack as well that bundle as in what Unity does where it, they keep on doing now for every month you can buy ten of these assets and you get them at like whatever. But yeah, your your no, stuff is I'm included. I'm not included in such a bundle unless ah. I seriously don't know about that. Then you probably it's probably just asking about the ones that you give your free stuff in with um with Unity. Definitely uh, with, um, with, Gaia. with Gaia, it's it's definitely exposed. I can see. I keep a good eye on Google Live Analytics, and I can definitely see things coming from Gaia and other different platforms where I do promote. So it's definitely exposing. I mean, with anybody with any product, not just. With gaming and assets, I mean, if the larger you can make the footprint, the better. The more eyes, at the end of the day, eyeballs sell stuff. So if I can get more eyeballs on it, I'm I'm one for I'm working with several asset publishers, and I would love to work with more. At the end of the day, the more publishers that are successful on the asset store, the better for me and for them and for developers. It mustn't be a small little close thing where only ten people are successful. So the more people I can work with. Even now, this last update, I've used the environments from um, Nature Manufacturer, Bart. I use that as, as my scenes for displaying the, the packages. And I then I cross-promote and I put it on my package description as well and the link so that people can see where it comes from. Um, and I use and I do demo scenes in the past 
using sound. I buy sound from other publishers on the store, and I put the link down. Even if you look at the exterior kit at the moment, if you scroll down right to the bottom on the description, it's got the links for all the different things oh, that yeah. I've used. Yeah, I've seen so I like using other people on the asset store, and it, it benefits both. With the that Tyler Dungeon, I think I've got Dungeon package mentioned in it because that works with it. And I mean, it just makes sense to everybody. We've all got the same aim. We all want to do this. We all want to be successful and build a dream. So why not pull other people with you? How many of your your assets or your models were included in that Gaia free freebies? Over twenty. So I can't remember. That was quite some time ago. Twenty. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, what's What's nice is it's it gives people the idea the the, the idea when it when it was added to that, like people that added um, Turbo Sculpture added grasses and flowers and other guys added rocks and all kinds of things like that. Is that people can have a uh, out of the box better experience they don't have to now go and source a bit of this and a bit of that and that and it's for each of those publishers it provides exposure and they themselves market it on their side again so you keep on doubling up on the on the exposure and at the end of the day the users get the benefit you don't have to use what's in the package but it gives them more stuff to look at i've got a small yeah so there's lots there. of you got loads. I'm playing about all these freebies houses that you, you've given in this pack. Yeah, what's what's an idea with it is that you can have lots of pre-done stuff. You don't have to go and sit immediately and do it because modular is good and it's got lots of benefits, but it does also take some time, especially oh, yeah. if you want to make your own, own custom personal library of what you want. Um, I got lots of the inspiration from this. What I told you from The Witcher Three, Witcher Three had lots of nice bright colors. And I wanted something where you don't have medieval villages. It's just brown and gray, like 99% of the stuff that you do see in even in most games. I wanted something that's nice and bright. You can now have a, you can create memorable landmarks where you can have in a village or for a specific faction or something, the villages and stuff can have a combination of red and green or blue and yellow or whatever. Or government buildings can have certain colors, almost like in real life. So you can have you don't say just that brown building. It's actually the building will have, will, will have unique colors and look. And it just creates, I think, better immersion in a game where you don't have the same thing over and over and it just looks the same, repetitive. That's also with packages with just a few houses, few buildings. The problem is you're going to walk past the same house 20 times and it's not going to be that interesting. That's the thing about the um, the blueprint system, though. So that's the power of it, though, isn't it? And it's not just you making these blueprints and giving them in your in your pack. Is that other people, people can make, are able well, to make? Nobody blueprints? else is currently making, but anybody can. A blueprint is is a cool word for prefab. Make a blueprint. You design a building. You drag and drop it into your hierarchy or in a folder. Um, not in a hierarchy. Sorry, in a folder. And it's a, then now it's a prefab, and that prefab gets exported. And when you export, you just uncheck dependencies. So it's literally going to export a recipe of what the what the, the the building's recipe is. And the moment you then the other person brings it in, he needs to own the full main package because it's dependent. Those dependencies that you did not export is the is the dependencies from the original package. So the moment you pull the group blueprint into the exterior kit or the interiors or the Bala dungeon set that that's also going to get some the moment you pull it in bang it reads all the details and it just works are you so it's really and they're tiny they're like a couple of kilobytes that's the nice thing we've had and somebody not else sharing the... at, Sorry, you and if somebody if i make a blueprint of two or three nice buildings and i and you give it to your buddy your buddy still has to own the full package and you're not sharing, when you're sharing that blueprint, you're not, you're sharing a design idea. You're not sharing the textures, you're not sharing the meshes. Because that person has to own it as well. To be able to open them. So to my knowledge, how copyright work, you're not sharing something that's copyrighted. My question is, um, we had somebody on the stream, I've been interviewed the other day, it was Elliot AI. And he's um, a similar kind of like idea with having people create their um, AI node diagrams 
for want of a better word, yeah. their maps of you know there's no actual um, prefabs or or um, like main Unity code, but the yeah. design of sharing this like you know say so, okay I want this I've drawn my nodes this is a node for an event this is the condition blah blah blah, but he wasn't able. Uh, Unity said, no, you're not allowed to allow people to distribute. They said, it's a good idea, but currently you'd be in violation of the uh, EULA if you're allowing people to share this, to make, the, to make them and then share them. Yeah. No, I'm not, at the moment, nobody's sharing these things. Um, there was a few people that asked me, can they make blueprints and sell it? I said to them, that's something that they will have to run past Unity. I'm the original package owner. I do not know if they will allow that. I don't completely know how I would feel about it if other people sell blueprints made with my stuff and they earn money from it. I don't, I haven't, uh, how can I say, thought about or considered. Might not be a nice feeling. Um, it might be a very nice feeling, but also looking back once that's allowed, I don't know if that's going to be something that I personally don't think Unity will allow because the, that person is not the original package creator. The weird thing was that they wouldn't even allow him to distribute his own, um, like, designs, logic when designs. When I did the, the one blueprint package that's on at the moment, that's a free one, the Shield, something, what's the thing's name? Yeah, really quickly. Look at this, look at this glass, lovely glass one. The I Sword got, and Shield Inn. I've got a, I've got Sword a floating shield house. Inn. Um, I got permission yeah. from Unity to launch that and see what the feedback was. And I've only had positive feedback from the Blueprint and from my Blueprints. Also, that's free available. Um, so I'm definitely launching that. And there was no objection from Unity to distribute the Blueprints like that. What are Unity like um, in like supporting and communicating with, with asset developers from your experience? I haven't had problems. Um, they, they are a big corporation. I think sometimes I felt I could have been responded to sooner or quicker on things, but I haven't had a bad experience. I got to learn more that it is a big corporation that's got investors and people, normal human beings that work. They're not robots that's just they snappy, snappy. So um, I would have liked to sometimes be responded to sooner, but in general, I'm, I'm happy with the, the way that they work. And the more you learn what to do and what not to do and how, then it becomes kind of less necessary to talk to them. I gave you a link if you want to quickly check. I gave in the Discord. I ah, gave cool. you a link to the the Virta snapping thing. The, it's, uh, uh, um, it's a short little video clip. It's on run about one minute. You can quickly see there what they should tell you, and you can. The uh, in chat, we just said if if you do control on and shift with terrains, it, it's what you're doing with the V. So you could control oh. shift for terrains, but it's V for meshes. Okay. So there you go. Thanks to Barack that. Dob. You got that in. Uh, I'm also learning. <laughs> Jepic Game says, will you be making more blueprints like PB Swords and Shield in? Oh, that's what's actually next next on my releases. I'm going to make a whole bunch of blueprint packages. Like I said, the thematic ones. There'll be one that's specific to, like say, like the other user asked, the swamp kits. There'll be like fishing villages. There'll be outposts and and fortifications there will be no no definitely that's what's next on my plate i'm nice. all, actually already halfway with several of them that will be pretty soon it wouldn't take that long <laughs> yeah man just the scene that you've got you doesn't even have plants and <laughs> n very little in and immediately you can see you can get such a variety of stuff now it's not just the usual buildings you haven't changed any um if you can pick one of them, maybe from the bottom, I'm it just, has the new roofs as well. I'm just having too, too much fun <laughs> playing about with these ones. <laughs> well, uh, one of the flatter roofs. Hang uh, on, let me, the on, the sec, second one, for instance. I like that one. It's got, <coughs> pardon me, it's got a nice little chimney on it. Um, yeah, nice brick. I've added the brick texture to that. Which one do you want? Quite well. <laughs> this one. Which one, one with want? a flatter roof. One to the right, that one. One left. No, no, no. Middle, bottom. Uh, the, blue, the blue one, middle bottom. This one? No, two more left. That's it. That one's got one of like some of the oriental themed little 
things uh, on the roof. I think I've already got. Have I got him in? No, no, no. That one that you picked. Yeah, I think I've already got the, him in the, the seat. Blue, the blue top. No, 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 not. Uh, oh, yes, yes, you've got. Find some. We've got a similar one to the scene. To the left of that one that you're dropping down now, you can see the lower pitch roof. I love your thatch and all your straw and your chimney. Whoa! And this little house, this little house, people missing like collider. A lot. Ah! <laughs> oh, there's a missing collider on that part of the roof. Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I didn't see that. See? I had to find something. No, no. I had to find something. <laughs> and I found it. Go to one of the... the there at the back is that house with a flatter roof. Just want to see the... Because that's the whole new roof sets was the... <laughs> lots of people actually asked for lower pitched roof. They didn't want just the very steep 45 degree ones. But there to the right, that house to the right, behind. Which one? This one? This is still old. No, no, this is still old roof behind it. One to the right. No, no, no. To the right. There, there, there is the lower pitch roof. That one. Now behind you, back right. This one. To your right, to your right. How much do I? Here we go. This, this one, is, this one, yeah. This one, the, the green roof. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the roof's like maybe 15 <laughs> or so degrees. The, the, that's the lower pitched roof. You do, added now. you do get my stamp of approval for your word, I have to say. You do get my stamp of approval for the word. It's a much better word. Okay. Yes, no, I liked it. Um, um, <laughs> Getting a stamp of approval from you is important. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew because I've even watched other people's reviews and it's like when I when I see you approach the wood, I already know what you're gonna say. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Wood is the thing is that bricks, tiles, mud, um, these are things actually people do and they look amazing, but really wood is the hardest thing to get Looking and also, good. wood is important. In the medieval times, it was a really important building material. Yeah. Uh, and the problem you'll see a lot of people with PBR wood is that their PBR textures just end up looking plasticky or metallic because um, they've just, you know, they've, they've skewered it all out. Yeah, but it's also too shiny many times. Yeah. Wood wasn't that shiny, I think, in those times. I didn't live then, but I don't think it was as shiny as some people make them. To your back, look at the house with a white brick. Down the steps to the right. Uh, with the white brick. This right, one here. Right, right, right. No, no, to the right, back, behind you. This one, with the white there. brick. Uh, are, the you, are, you, are, you, are you looking at my Discord or are you looking at the stream? Um, looking at the stream. Look look at the Discord, man. I'm sharing my, I'm sharing my PC with you so you, get, so you don't have any lag and you're sitting there watching the stream. Pause your stream and look ah. at the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm wondering why... Why are you? Why have you got lag on Discord? There shouldn't be any lag on Discord. Uh, oh. Question from Codename Mike. Compatibility question. Will you still support Unity 5.10 plus? Because in your latest Royal Quarters, you only support 2017.1. Hey, for about four days, I had problems bringing the blueprint, this new package, into it. I had bug after bug, and then this doesn't look right, and that doesn't import right. And my only solution was I have the project as a 5.1 so I can try to rectify and try to see what it is that I need to fix. And I can, I don't have a problem submitting it. I mean, one can, I can submit uh, multiple versions. I will do that. I will, I will see if I can fix what was wrong so that I can still add it into the package. Because I've actually got it built as a 5.1.0 project space. Cool. Hey, Sanya's in the chat. Hello, Sanya, buddy. Uh, we're playing about with some uh, some new wood. If, uh, I do. I mean, let me just go back to out of this mode and back into here, because we we touched upon it very briefly at the start. But I just grabbed. Go back, close these folders here, and uh, close this folder here. So I just grab. And I just chuck on. Well, we've got Alt Two. What was Alt Two for? That's the brighter ones. So we got the screenshots Alt? at the start of the project. I showed brighter, brighter blue, brighter green, brighter red, and many people liked it. So I thought, well, why not add the back? It's, I've done the texture already. I can just as well add it in. That's more like a teal green color, like an older blue color. 
So I can actually mix and match. Even that roof. Drag drag this texture onto that roof. That's the, where the other roof tile thing fits on. On the UV map. That's why that tile texture can immediately be chopped out. <laughs> this is beautiful, man. But now I want to show you something else, which I don't know how many people know how to do it. At the moment, that beige texture that you've got on the, on the if you go down those three walls that you haven't yeah. swapped yet, that beige texture is the same space as what the blue green the blue teal color yeah. occupies on the on the texture sheet now it's easy to swap that uh, that wall any one of those walls click on that wall click click again so you only select the yeah. wall that's it now keep it keep it selected and you can see now in the hierarchy top left which where it is which one it is yep this this uh, okay, no, yeah, yeah. first one now keep base. it keep it selected now go in the bottom by prefabs this is a really, really easy thing to do. Prefabs, base, walls. Now that would be plaster one, I think, or plaster two. For argument's sake, you want to swap it with wood one. You could click on wood one. Now you can see the wall is just a plain wall with nothing on it. Yeah. So it'll be the top. This will be the first wall there. Yeah. yeah. Click, click, drag and drop it onto into the hierarchy on top of that highlighted one. What, as in in it or above yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, on on it, on it. Becomes a child object. Yeah. Now, now, what happens? Why you did that? The reason you I do it like that. It takes on the orientation, whatever has yeah. transformed on that object. It immediately takes all that on. So in three D space, it's exactly where that wall was yeah. that you dropped dropped it on. Now take it and just dra now click it and it drag up. it just just outside the yeah like that yeah and then it will take a, yeah yeah no no and then the, delete the other one it's going to now tell you you want to destroy the prefab but it's fine and there's the new texture now that texture has a different color on the texture sheet go back to your material materials there's my folder Top. there we go yep now drag and drop that onto the cross uh, the horizontal wood one uh, so you've swapped it with the one the way the red now occupies the texture space. <laughs> if you can go quickly and just to tie that up, if you can go to the user guide, that nice JPEG with yep. shows what's what. Hold on one second, bud. The, the documents folder, the user guide. Um, just read in chat. How can I change the color? I, um, well, we just did it. The unless they want to go to in Photoshop and edit that block, then they can just. Go and make their own other color. They can make it purple if they want to make it purple. Unless you can somewhere there tune it. I don't know. Some shader thing can mm. make your own color. You could, um, if we, we just select this here. So, what you could do, <laughs> Sengoku, is that you could, um, if you if you look, one, once you purchase Muck, um, and Muck's available. Uh, by the way, there is an expansion for Muck that I'm making that will allow Muck my. Have you have you seen my Muck yet, buddy? No. My my cat my ultimate character creator, Messi's ultimate no. character. Oh, you got to see it. It's beautiful. Um, it's a custom character customization tool. But I managed to work out that I could actually use it um, by adding a bit more code and expand upon it to be able to customize buildings as well so i could okay. use it with your modular buildings and the texture the shader that i've got has allows you to put masks in so you can actually mask off these colors here and yeah, really change choose. yeah and then change the color of this red to be green or whatever within unity itself and oh. have to do that so Sengoku, you could actually do that way or like Peter Ford, you're saying you could go into Photoshop and just change this to be a different one as you want, or you could put a mask on your shader and do it within Unity. Um, Many ways of doing the, it. The user guide. So user guide is in the documents, and uh, this nice big picture. Can open that big on screen. Now there, it explains exactly. Hang on, let Lost me, uh, one. I need to show people at home because they can't see it. A fairly high resolution image, 300 DPI, actually for print. There we go. I can see plaster one. 
on the right hand side plus this new material everything that's plaster one currently will become blue everything that's plaster two will become that ochre color ah, okay so this yeah. is a guide so when you design buildings yourself and you want it to be blue then you just need to design it with the plaster one wall set uh -huh. and then when you drag and drop the material on top of those pieces bang they're automatically blue so if you want the triangles on top, for instance, if you look at the buildings that I gave you with the, the blueprints, mm -hmm. many of them have nice bright colors as on the floors and, and the walls. And then the triangle, I kept one of the horizontal or vertical wood, woods. Then I just swap it out for that. So it's very easy to, to it's like Lego. You <laughs> just choose which one you want to build. Build the whole house like that. And ultimately, if somebody would want to go and take all the prefabs and make duplicates of them and gave them all the new material. But that's just going to make... If the package now has 4,000 prefabs, then it means you're going to have 8,000 prefabs. And you yeah, surely so. don't want to do that. <laughs> well, it's the thing that... That'll be nice if you can have a whole wall set that's all already done blue and you just drag and drop it in. Or yeah. you just do it with this with you, a simple user guide. You could you could do that and then um, label your packet having 8,000 prefabs. And um, <laughs> and people go, wow, 8,000 yeah. prefabs. Oh, then people will say I'm selling them bloat. <laughs> because I'm just dupli really duplicating the same thing. Ah, good point. Where's the bamboo one? This is just explaining. A bamboo would be where the red brick is. So, so if you look at is... if you look at any house, no, no, the red brick. Bottom, this one here. Brick, brick, brick. Yes, it'll occupy that space. So if you look at the stone one, if you've got any house with stone one, where there's actually many, all the plinths actually in the houses on the houses, are bamboo one. To go back to Unity. Uh, one second, pal. Go to any house that's like a, like a plinth underneath. Um, Raised out. Oh, was it? Several, several of them like that. Yeah, we just playing. Yeah, back there, there in the back there. Yeah, that. Technically, if I understand it correct, that plinth, if you drag and drop alt material 2 onto it, it should sit on bamboo. <laughs> Haven't tried there that. You go. Yeah, there. There's your bamboo house. <laughs> but I think that, in combination with the nice new wood and the oriental style roofs, can make so, like a whole set of like oriental style buildings. That's why I added the bamboo. But we got the um, the meshes base. Uh, what was it? By going to the meshes. The, is that where you see, you've got your 311 new meshes are in? Yeah. Are royal. Um, roof. There you go. So yeah. they're in meshes, base, royal, uh, meshes, base, roofs, royal. And in then we've got, again, bases and details and extend. Oh, each of them have subfolders inside. You open it up on the yeah. left hand side. A drag and drop like that third little roof is quite a nice one. Uh, yeah, but the meshes, you mustn't, drag in, you mustn't drag in meshes because their yeah, scale yeah. is completely wrong. You must drag in prefabs. I just wanted to, here we go, this is what I wanted to show people at home. So, it's got... That's the extension, so the one in this. That's where all your detail is, all these, these verts and, and tries you've got coming on here on this nice little bit of detail coming on here. Loud. Perfect. Whereas this one, 180 verts, 90 tries. This is why 3D Forge stuff works well on mobile. Because yes. it's pretty, like, when you look at the, the poly counter, and there's, there's hardly anything there. Go to the, go to the detail, the one up. Yeah. Let's see which one have the, there's quite a bit of really nice stuff there. Go into the, like that one, for instance, have lots of little, it snaps around a that one I think snaps around a one by one tower or building. You can have this nice little oriental tower and building of with little things that snap on it whatever height you want to have it. And it gives this nice oriental eastern and small and big ones. That's all the awnings and um, these different ones. The decoy has lots of different those are those are really nice. Go to the prefabs folder so you can actually drag one into Yeah, I was about to say let's let's play I want to play with one now. Yes, they look really nice. You can build these nice little villages with little towers and stuff. Uh, roofs. Yeah, I just Royal... forgot. I forgot the alphabet. Oh. <laughs> Tell <laughs> big decor. Dec uh, yeah, this is the Unity bug. Just right-click yeah. on the Royal folder. 
And then and on the real folder it itself. In. Yeah. Get all unity. Unity. At least it goes quick. It does it once it gives like one little flash and then all of them are little thumbnails. Yeah, surprising that Unity 2017 seems to be doing this a lot quicker than 18 does. Oh, hugely. And also much faster than uh, 5.1.0. Uh, let's pop back and we've got some more questions here. Um, Barack Dub, have the windows been updated to, would love to have a reflection or windows that look more like glass? I haven't done anything to the windows. It is something I can have a look at, maybe even a different texture. But they have got normal maps and stuff like that that should give a shininess to it, but it's not like a special different shader or anything. Go to the decor folder now. It's finished importing. Which one do you want? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, there's diff they've got completely different things in them. So there's little tiny little end roofs. This is like a very small little folder. This one, for instance, but picked like one of the last ones. Those ones, nice detail. You can pull it into the scene. You can make little villages and paths and put these at entrances. And oh, nice. You create some nice shadows on the floors as well because of all the details and protruding pieces. Go to the other decor folders. There's, I think there's fairly different things. But these are little walls that can snap onto sides of buildings. Some with, with ends end caps on and some not, so that you can put them in between stuff. Deco 5 and 4, have a look what's there. These are really nice. Drag that into a scene. One of those. I'll put that on. Yeah, it's pivot points is exactly where it would snap onto a corner of a building. Ah, you okay. know, according to your gizmo yeah. there. So you can put it also on a, on a larger building, the corners put them at whatever height you want. So I can just chuck him on a... It could work with that. My idea was is that you can use lots of the walls and stuff from the castles and, ca ah, okay. and cathedral update. But you have nice fortressy palace kind of things. And you can add lots of these oriental style things to give like imperial palaces and castles and like a mansion expensive mansion type setup. If you can look at the entrances, there's a folder called entrance. There's some really nice stuff there. Drag anyone the oh, bottom right is the boo. Uh, drag it into the scene. Again like a nice little eastern village. So what do you do? Where do you get your research from? You're just sitting there reading National Geographic all day long. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> and there's wall tops, because now you can have this as an entrance for a village. Two, two down from entrances. Um, this one. Yeah, now these are wall tops. Uh, 2.5, 5, 7.5, 10. Now you can drag and drop that in, and they come, will come in at three meters high. You can build walls with the blue and the green and the whatever, or you can use the castle type, the stone textures from the castle expansion pack. Build your walls, and you can have these little eastern villages with this tiny little narrow roost on top. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can build like really nice eastern kind of looking things. They have those little tiny narrow roofs on top of the the walls. I like and it's also here with, and also with. If you look at this, there's, um, it's got, it's capped on both ends properly, or there is a, a, a set that is open on the on the left and right, so it's less polys. There he is. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't. I try to eliminate unnecessary ones that you don't need. Oh yeah, and then you don't also have the problem where you can see them where they're fighting each other, because yeah. they're touching. Yeah, this was careful texturing to. I don't know about any problems anywhere. And at the edge, even though it's a 90 degree corner, if you look at that little tiny roof, and you just look at it from the bottom, kind of, like you would stand and look up. I tried to do it in a clever way. No, 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 more. Well, I want to see the top and the, and the edge. Top and the edge, so you look more to more from the left. Well, like that. You can see it's done in, yeah, it's kind of done in a clever way where it looks like it's the end of the tile that bends down. And the texture actually carries on around the corner. That's what I'm trying to say. Ah, yeah. From the top of the roof to the bottom little strip. 
if you can even can go up close, the texture exactly just carries on. It's not just a strip of texture stuck on. It's actually the texture itself bent. We got um, Sandy saying beautiful looking textures. Now I, I've got to be careful how I say this because I don't want it to sound too bad. But okay. um, you can you've had your your assets on the store for quite a while. And you've been doing stuff for years since your assets came on. And you add new stuff and you um, add new models and you add new textures and you expand your stuff. But your skill set, obviously, imp is improving and has improved over the years. Yes. And that's what um, is important about this asset pack, this expansion, is that your old textures... Are now when you especially you compare them to this are dated. They're not the level of what your skill set is at, and they're not the level of what um, your new stuff would be when you're making it. Yes. Um, and you know, you'd expect that. You know, because obviously when you made your original assets, you were younger than you are with, now. With what? Yes, but this has to work with the current package. Exactly. Like we said, the right and the start with the PBR. There's no use. I come and bring out an expansion that's completely going to clash. I don't think people would buy that. I can't give you these new textures and roofs and it looks completely different to the house next to it. It's, uh, for me, there needs to be a continuity where the assets still work with it. Especially and if people has got a game and somebody's using your stuff and he's, he's put your assets yeah, in his uh, game or his projects. Or he's been know. working on a game for, for two years or three years. All of a sudden, you do an update on your asset and then and it just doesn't look like the rest. Yeah, Bashes. and it's just killed his project. No, uh, but I didn't hide it. I, from the start, made it clear. Gave screenshots of what it is. I, it's on par with the balance. This is why, like, this is why I like this is a separate asset. If this was part of the original one, and you said, "Here's now an update in the original pack," um, I'd have been like, "Okay." That's cool for me, because I haven't used it yet, but what about all the people who, are, who have been using it? How does that affect yeah, them? Ongoing projects, yes. Um, this now is, I have to say, it is a lot better. I'm, I'm putting them side by side with the, the old textures. Even though you've made it so that it still fits and it feels like it's the same design as the old ones, the quality of this new textures are, I just want you to highlight your wood as an example, so much better. I mean, it's, it is just pops at, at you. Is it the colours? Is it the normal maps? No. I don't know. You know, it's, it's just everything all together. Just it just, it just, that nice. yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, congratulations on that one. Um, but you're a tit because you've done it again at 300 prefabs and meshes <laughs> at, for, for 20 quid. And you're offering it for 15 quid for, for a week. So, yeah, you don't seem to learn my, your mistake. I can give people my PayPal, PayPal uh, details and they can donate more if they want. <laughs> I, that's the thing. You, you need to set up a Patreon, honestly. I would say, because last time you came on a year ago, a year ago, I remind you, people were asking you for ways that they can, like, donate and tip you <laughs> extra. And it's been a year and you still haven't set up a Patreon account. So let's okay, ask other chat. people also ask. So I must maybe do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, people in chat, how many of you are existing 3D Forge customers, and do you feel like you've got more than your money's worth on his assets, and that you like to support him more? As a question, because uh, there you go. There's three exclamation marks after that. Yes. <laughs> He's asked the question as well. I'm actually popped here now because I went away from the other one. But he asked, does it automatically update all the wood? It updates the ones that you want. The existing wood is still there, so you can have all the all the existing villages and buildings. And um, I'm just answering the, the, the user. Yeah. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun. You normally do that. <laughs> you, know, you do it, dude. But the idea is, like you show, the drag and drop whichever ones you want to update. So if you've got, if you want to use the, I mean, go to that house there in the back, the one that's, that old you one can here. see right now. Well, they're in the back, the old one, yes. Yeah, here we go. You can, uh, well, in the Unity project, yes. And you can go and drag and drop and exchange just that wood on that house. Don't have to do the walls. Yeah, where's my camera? Really? That actually also looks nice. Yeah, that's it. Drag and drop the material onto that. 
and a second I've opened up too many folders so I've got I've got a choice of which ones are well. I'm going to go with this one not the old one so um, the wood on the two old one and old two is exactly the go. same just the wood yeah you can just change the wood now that you've done so, the bottom floor um, got that one done here you have to just I no. show you no 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 to, yeah, to change that wood unfortunately is part of that mesh let's go yeah go back you can see the old wood on the top and the new wood on the bottom yeah here we go I'm trying here you, you go can you can see out the just the wood of the first floor so you can see we can yeah, see can there see the, the difference that you've got the bottom one and now what about the stairs yeah. Ooh. stairs is a different one isn't uh, it stairs wood is a different <laughs> separate mesh but I haven't updated stay. Yeah, uh, remember I told you about the colliders that I did. Oh yeah, tell people. That's what you, you. That's what you chat. Drag the thing just now on you. Drag it onto the collider. Tell 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 our friends in chat about the colliders on the stairs. I'll drag the material on top, then you can see there. If you take the material, and you drag it onto the stairs. There you go. Material. Now take the new material. There you go. Oh. So there, yeah. that's now actually snapped it onto the collider that's there. Yeah. I made separate mesh, some very, very basic mesh colliders for things like staircases. So you, the staircase is basically a ramp, and not like da 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 going up. Uh, and that's all the ones that's pre pre done, and they included with the steps as child objects, and and a collider set on them. So when you come to the staircase, when you walk, you can go back into the scene, play it, let the let the, your character come and walk. And you can see, you can just go there and walk straight up the stairs without having to fiddle with it. Go in play mode. Oh, you're going to leave it like that. <laughs> like it's got a carpet, carpet on it now. <laughs> but I did it so that the staircases just work out of the box. People didn't have to go and fiddle and try to make things work. And, um, and you don't well, well, they have the guy like... <laughs> Bob bubbling as he runs up but and that house there for instance that tiles there that you see now you can go and drag the new material just onto the roof there oh, and I'm that's the other it, thing yeah. and that's the other thing that's nice the new prefabs that were given of the roofs with the new tile texture on it occupies the space of the old slate texture that you see there so those all those new roofs that you got all the little eastern style roofs you can drag and drop the old existing texture, the texture that comes vanilla with the package. That's a yeah, there, that one, that one, yeah. that one, that greenhouse. This one here. Yeah. yeah, the greenhouse. Go and drag the original material. There you go. The one just left of alt one. There you go. There. So you can all those low low pitch roofs can now have that texture because that occupies the same texture space. Oh Twitcheroo's got a run. Twitcheroo, thanks for stopping in, pal. And Twitcheroo, before you go, have you, have, you got a have you got a question to ask before you leave? Just to uh, make sure I get your questions in. I don't want you running off with an un unasked question, or an unanswered question even. Um, I would say one thing, Barak, you can always just um, modify the original prefab of the original pack yourself. Uh, then you've done it. Then you've got a library of and make new prefabs out of them. Drag yeah. and drop onto the prefabs. Make a make a duplicate. What's well, the thing? He doesn't. You don't because he, if he's got an existing scene and he just wants to replace the wood, he can just replace the wood in that prefab, in that original prefab, and just reapply the uh, the update the prefab in his scene, and it would have used the new texture. So you could do that way. If you don't want to use the old wood anymore, you can just do that. Um, it's a lot of pref that's the problem with 3D Forge he gives you a lot of prefabs and a lot of materials and a lot of meshes so um, yeah that's his that's the problem you get when, you, when you've got a pack with 4,000 prefabs oh, it's, a, oh, it's a blessing or a curse <laughs> exactly it's a blessing or a curse um, I can't apologise for giving too much so. <laughs> that's what I say to my wife I can't apologise for giving too much um, <laughs> this Another question. Due to the popularity of these packs, I would guess that they're pirated a lot. Is that your experience? Question from Morspawn. Whew. I had a person create a torrent of all my packages and it was downloaded more than a thousand times um, a couple of years ago. So it's not nice to see that. One way that I'm trying my best, at the end of the day, you're not going to stop that. Um, 
I would like to stop that, but I can... Lots of those people are hoarders. I don't think they actually pirate it and go and use and make a game and sell it. It's just like a thing they do. Um, just hoard things and I've got this and I've got that and brag and swap with buddies and whatever. The way I'm trying to prevent that from happening to a, to a degree, I think I'm successful. And that's one of the things that you said I must stop doing, but there's a benefit to it is the free stuff. What I've seen on, on pirate websites, they will share the version 1 and then share the version 2 or the 1.1 or 1.2 and 1.3 but at a stage the person that shares it that keeps on sharing it gets an attitude of you know what you had a chance to try it now go and buy it if you want it. and me giving more free updates the person that really actually want to use it that maybe initially pirated it will very likely go and and then go and purchase it because first of all they've seen lots of updates coming out so they they see that there's great value in it and that there's good support on the product and they want the latest version. That's also one of the reasons why I did a free update shortly before doing this and even before the, the next blueprints that will come. So that you need the latest version to be used, the, late, the latest addition to the package. So it's one way of kind of combating piracy. If you just many, many, many art assets, it's dumped to version one and that's it. Then it's easy for those guys to pirate it because the version is always the same and it's yeah. never getting updates. But if you keep on adding free contents, and the, like I said, the people that actually want to use it and not just hoard it, they're going to want the latest version. So I think, and what the pirates luckily don't do, they don't rip out my catalog. <laughs> they just dump the package as is. So technically, they're spreading the nice, cool, interactive catalog that comes with the PDF with hyperlinks. <laughs> Good. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, the, 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 the sharing they do actually cause me to get some sales. Well, we've got to see the, try and see a, a, a positive side to, to everything yeah it's not all bad it's not nice to see it happen it's like anything if uh, you've I mean, created something on your own and you see people just take it it's not nice to see it but uh, to focus on that and make that your thing in life is not nice you're just going to make yourself unhappy a thousand focus downloads, and make more assets basically that's a thousand people that liked your stuff well there's a thousand when i checked soon after they released it the total value of the whole torrent was three hundred and fifty dollars. So that becomes lots of dollars, and I live in a country where the currency is fourteen times a fourteenth of the dollar. You can imagine how many rands it becomes. <laughs> so remember, everyone, we're waiting for him to open up his Patreon account. Um, so koku has got an idea. What about using Mesh Baker on the finished house and then change the material with the one drag and drop? It's a great idea, Sengoku, actually. Um, let's check if we've got another question. Um, the Blueprint System prefabs is a really neat idea. How would you say this has worked out in practice? Uh, is the one package that's been released so far. The free one has worked out perfect. I've only had good response. Many, many people are really happy with the free ones that you get from 3D Forge or CR.ZA website. Um, and it's definitely worked out good enough that I'm going to release paid for packages with it. Lots of people are happy. And the big thing about the prefabs, the sorry, the blueprints, anything that's in the blueprint package, you can build yourself. But like the other user now have said about the time thing, now there's different reasons why people would buy blueprints. Some people, many people just don't have the time. They would love to have something like you saw those blueprints that you got now with this package. Mm. Easy. Drag and drop. They're in. They're done. Very nice. So when I'm going to release thematic blueprint package packages, you're going to purchase the theme that you actually want and need in your project. So you can have hours of work for a few dollars, bang, into your project, and immediately it's there. So lots of people don't have the time. Some people are just not artistic enough. They, they, they love what they see. They would like to have such stuff in their project. But it's um, they're just not getting it right, um, and it's just it, that's not everybody's skill set. Some some people are good at sound, some at programming, some at whatever. I'm I'm using my superpower, so I'm going to provide people with sets of really nice looking, ready to use stuff. If it's a farm farmlands kind of uh, package, it it will have separate little farm houses. It will include um, like maybe say for 20 farm houses. It'll have 20 little small holdings where it's a farmhouse with the surrounding a couple of um, with fences and a, maybe a windmill and a water wheel thing and there's like a little small holding and then it'll have larger ones and it'll have like a little farm village so you'll get a large selection of farm related stuff 
and it's it's for a few dollars you can have an instant solution in your package where you can within five minutes well not even five minutes it takes a few clicks things in your project and you can design and concentrate on what you're good at if you're a programmer and you want to just have ready-made stuff well that's a really good cost-effective solution I mean, for argument's sake a package would sell today for fourteen dollars ninety nine how long does a person work to to earn wherever you're working to earn fourteen dollars ninety nine so it's you're gonna get stuff technically for free I'm going to say a massive thank you to Mr. 3D Forge for popping in, showing us his shrimp, teaching us that you can actually stick shrimp in a bag and send them in the post and, it, and it'll be fine. But it's eight bucks a shrimp, so don't eat them when you're drunk. That's my right. advice. <laughs> thank you very much for your time and thanks for the opportunity to show the users. Mate, it was a thank pleasure. Thank you very much. I mean, um, yeah. I have to say, mate, you've got good wood. Cool. Get a good rating from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. So, give a Thank massive bye bye to Mr. Freddy Forge, Blacksmith, aka Mr. Wood. Well, that was it for another live dev interview. I hope you had fun and enjoyed yourselves. You too can take part if you pop over every Fridays and Saturdays at alldw.twitch.tv slash TheMessyCoder, 9pm GMT time. If you want to know what it is in your time zone, we'll use Google. So don't forget to all your friends and neighbours. If you do like it, click it. Till next time. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Until next time.